Hello, you guys. Hope you all are doing fabulous. I just want to encourage you guys. Um, I know that for some, this election didn't turn out the way that you had planned. But the God, our God says, do not lean on our own understanding, but his. His plans are greater than what we have planned, what we had hoped things had gone. I just want to let you guys know that this election is prophetic. We know that we are in the last days because God says we are. His word says that we are in the last days. And he says to look up and know that our redemption draws near. He does not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, peace, and of sound mind. That he will be our protection. That is, he will uphold us with his right hand and his staff will protect us. He is allowing everything to happen the way it is happening. We know that we are in the end. And because we know we are in the end, I just want to make it clear that he doesn't say that when these things take place, look up and know that America is going to be great again, that things are going to be great again. In fact, when these things start to take place, to look up and know that your redemption draws near, that our rescue is near. And when we are rescued, things don't get better. They get worse. This is a part of a plan. We know that before this election, we knew that our rescue was nigh. It was close. It was around the, the corner. We knew that the tribulation is around the corner. And that doesn't mean things get better. It means things get worse. We know that the Lord says for us to, to pick up our sword and to fight. And we did. We did what we could do. We voted. We picked up our sword and we voted. And we need to trust in him because he is allowing these things to happen. I just want to give you kind of paint a picture in your minds. Think of it. The Lord speaks in so many different and creative ways. And he uses things for us to paint pictures, to know the times that we are living in. Because he's just that great. Think of it. Trump. Pence. Trumpet. In 1 Thessalonians, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. For the Lord himself. Actually, I'm going to go to um, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will not by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. We know that our redemption draws near. The dead in Christ are soon to be rose. And we who remain, we are going to be glorified. We will be changed and caught up with the Lord forever. And 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15, verse 51 through 53. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. We shall be glorified. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. And the dead will be rise, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortal 
<laughs> this mortal must put on immortality. We are soon. Our, re our redemption is so close, you guys. I believe that I've always, since for months now, have believed that our rescue is imminent. But I believe even more, more now that our redemption draws nigh. He doesn't say that when, when these things take place, to look up and know that America is going to be great again. To look up and know that the nations are going to be making peace and that this world will be good again. No, in fact, it says the opposite. It says that we will be glorified and that the tribulation will begin and Jacob's trouble will begin. It doesn't get better, it gets worse. And when things go down, we go up. We knew before this election, because of God's word, that we are in the end of days. So we know and we knew that the tribulation is, was around the corner. Our God is with us. He is here. He will not leave us nor forsake us. He does not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, peace, and of sound mind. And we need to trust and hold fast and know. Because I know some people out there are getting weary and tired. And some people doubting. But hold fast. Hold fast. We do not fight against flesh and blood, but a principalities in darkness, the wicked. In fact, I'm going to go in here. I'm sorry. I didn't actually plan this part out. Um, give me one moment. Just listen to this. This is in Daniel chapter 9. I'm going to go through it really quickly. In the first year of Darius, the son of Osiris, of the lineage of Medus, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Excuse me if I'm pronouncing these wrong. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood the book the books, the numbers of the year specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Then I sat my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord, my God, and made confessions and said, O Lord, great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and the mercies with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. We have sinned and committed inequity. We have done wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your pre precepts and your judgments. Neither have we heeded your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and our princes, to the fathers and all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us shame of face as it is the day, to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And all Israel, those near and those far off, and all the countries to which you have driven them because of the unfaithfulness which they have committed against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. What are we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws? which he has set before us by his servants and prophets. Yes, all Israel has transgressed your law and has departed so as not to obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses and servant of God have been poured out on us because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his word, which he has spoken against us and against our judges who judge us. By bringing upon us a great disaster, for under the whole heaven such has never been done as what has been done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all these disasters have come upon us, yet we have not made our prayer before the Lord, our God, 
and that we might turn from the iniquities and understand your truth. Therefore, the Lord has kept the disaster in mind and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all the works which he does, though we have not obeyed his voice. Our great nation, the United States, our forefathers have founded our nation under God and the principles of God. But as the Bible says, all these things taking place, the, the great falling away, this is a great falling away. We are witnessing America as a nation. I'm not talking about the church, we who are sealed with the Holy Spirit, but our nation has turned their face from God, have become self-lovers and self-indulgers, lovers of wicked and not what is good, where our nation is praising evil, where evil is good and good is evil. That is where we have turned to. And we know the Lord knows our hearts. He hears our crying out for him to return. He knows we're weary and we're tired and we're restless. He knows we're desperate for his return. He's graceful and such a merciful God, but there is going to be a time where he says no more delay because we have not, as a nation, turned from our iniquity and made our prayer known before him. And in fact, our nation is rejecting him, pushing him out, pushing him out, pushing him out. What we are witnessing, I believe, is the turning and the beginning of Jacob's, Jacob's trouble. Could Trump be the last trumpet before the trumpet? I think so. I think so. Be encouraged, you guys. And know that he is at the door. We are closer than we've ever been to his return. Every day that goes by, we are that much closer. And know that if you are fearful, feeling anxiety, having this uneasy feeling in your gut, change the way you are thinking about what's going on. See it from a spiritual point of view. Don't look at it as politics. Look at it as a plan of God. It is in his hands. That no matter who sits in the White House, he remains on that throne and he is in control and he is allowing. See, nothing can be done without his approval, without him allowing these things to happen. He is allowing what is going on in our nation to happen because we cannot stop prophecy from being fulfilled. And we are about to go home. We are about to be glorified, changed in the spirit, out of the flesh and of the spirit. And we will be with the Lord forever and ever. And this nation will have to face Jacob's trouble. But America doesn't get great. That's not how it happens. See, things need to start shifting so that prophecy can be fulfilled. God used and anointed Trump and used him for his purposes to fulfill God's plans. And whatever happens, God know that God will use anyone to fulfill his plan. So maybe Biden was put into office to fulfill his plan. Trump may have done his job and we just need to be praying over him. Praying over protection, over him, peace, strength, over his family, over our nation. That doesn't mean to not pray. We need to make sure that we are praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ for our nation, for our president, 
Whether you like our president or not, we need to be praying. And we need to hold fast to Jesus and know the times we are living in. And to understand that these things are taking place. Look up and know that our redemption draws near. This is exciting times. Do not be afraid. Fear is from Satan himself. God does not give us the spirit of fear, but a power, peace, and a sound mind. He is with us right now. He is upholding us. He is, he is holding us up and protecting us. He is going to give us the strength that we need and the peace. And these days that we're living in where it's hard to find peace, but he is the ultimate peace. Continue to shine your light in the darkness for we are not of this world, but we were put in this world. We are the restrainer. We restrain the wicked. We are the salt that preserves the earth. We are the light that shines in the darkness. And until we are gone, we have work to do on this earth. And that is to expand the kingdom of God. To praise and glorify him. And when we are taken, when we are raptured, we the restrainer taken out of the way is when the wicked has full reign on this world. It can't happen until we're gone. So know that we are the salt that preserves the earth. Put on that powerful armor, the full armor of God. Because we are in a spiritual war. If we could see with our eyes what's really going on, it would be overwhelming. So we need to know that we are not in a physical war. We are in a spiritual war and we need to put on our armor and fight. Be an example to people. For such a time as now, now is the time to expand his kingdom. Till the very last second, till he comes, we need to be out there and showing love. Don't get caught up. We did what we were asked to do. The only thing we can do, vote, vote. The rest is in his hands. We can't stop prophecies from happening. And to trust that he's in control, that his ways are greater than our ways. And what we need to be doing now is shining love, love. Being, a, being an example of love, preaching the gospel, to those who are asleep and who are lost. That is how we fight in this war. We're not in this, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. This is only a temporary home and we go home soon. Be encouraged, be excited. Because he is here. He is here. He's not near, he's here. And the ark, the doors, they're closing. Every day that goes by is a blessing. But we need to do what we were called to do on this world. To be the light in the darkness. To be an amazing and great example to love. Have a good one, you guys. I'm so excited. God bless.